Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode. Today I have this, the Audi Q3 mob style uh, or gangster style or whatever because this car, I think it belonged to a gangster. Wait a minute, a gangster? What kind of a gangster drives an Audi Q3? Huh, that's interesting. Uh, maybe it belonged to a woman? Yeah, that's it, a woman gangster. A lady gangster who had an Audi Q3 and uh, decided to make it all black out to uh, hide all the chrome elements, to paint the rim, to make the car look more gangstish. So today I have this car over here and I'm gonna drive it, I'm gonna review it and I'm gonna share the experience with you. See you in a bit. Let's discuss about the front end of the car. I find it quite aggressive, quite interesting, and I do like these sleek headlights. Of course, they are LEDs. Well, not the whole headlight. The daytime running light is LED and, well, the main beam and the high beam are big Xenon. Also, the front grille is a one single frame hexagonal grille, which has a cool pattern right over here. The Audi badge sitting proudly in the middle being blacked out down here you have a front splitter which is in the same color as uh, the grill and as those fake air intakes now these are fake but they do look cool i think that in the rs uh, q3 these ones are not fake but in this one well they are here for design only the hood well, the hood has some beautiful lines on it and it's actually blending quite cute here with the front grille. So the front end design of the car looks quite cool. This car doesn't have front parking sensors. It doesn't have front camera or uh, adaptive cruise control, but uh, still, I think it looks quite cool. What do you think of it? Uh, not of the whole car, just the front end. Engine wise, this car has a 2 liter diesel engine which produces 150 horsepower, has 340 newton meters, goes from 0 to 60 in 9.6 seconds thanks to the 6 speed manual gearbox, and manages to do 68 miles per gallon, which I don't have to tell you how impressive this is, considering that this is not quite a smallish car. I know it's a small crossover SUV, but still, I have to admit that 68 miles per gallon. This is something very impressive. Let's discuss about the side of the Q3. Well, first of all, you notice the sleek coupe silhouette because, well, this one gets sloppy towards the rear end and gives the car a very sporty look. But also you notice the 17 inch wheels. Wait a minute, 17 inch? Mm, they are kind of small. And you are right, but you have to take something in consideration. If you get bigger wheels on this car, it's gonna be uncomfortable because the car is not that long and the ride quality will suffer. But I have to tell you that with these 17 inch wheels, the car is very comfortable. Also on the side, you do have these mirrors, which they have the turn signal into them, an LED turn signal, which you'll see right now. The side of the car actually looks quite good. All the chrome elements have been actually blacked out to give the car a unique look. Also right here you have the roof lines, which these ones have been blacked out as well. And I do think that gives a very elegant touch to the car. Also, you have these wind breakers, which, well, I can tell you a secret regarding these. These can make the car be a little bit noisier on the inside than it actually is. With these on and the window closed at high speeds, these will make a hell of a sound but well this car has them probably uh the guy loved it or i don't know why he uh, put these maybe he smoked or the lady smoked the gangster lady but nevertheless they are here and uh well i don't really like them i don't really want them in any of my cars i don't know what do you guys think about that regarding the rear end of this car well have a look i do think that these Tail lights look amazing. This pattern over here looks quite, quite cool. You have the turn signal, which is a single stripe line, which gives the car a very futuristic design. The whole tail lights give the car a very futuristic design, and I do like it. Of course, the car has been debadged, so you don't have any 
Audi logo or, well, nothing, because remember, this is a gangstish car. All the windows have been blacked out. Of course, uh, they have window tint on them, black window tint. And, um, well, you have a roof spoiler right here, which emphasizes the sportiness of the car, but also these plastic sides over here, uh, they're giving the car a very aerodynamic look. Uh, these are plastic covers, by the way, and uh, I have to tell you that they look quite, quite good. So, in the rear bumper, you have the parking sensor hidden right over here. You have a dual exhaust here, and uh, this is something that I like, uh, honestly. I like the Audis from this era because they don't have those horrible and awful fake exhausts. Right here, you have some lights. But what these lights do is that when you pop the trunk, those lights take over. Because, well, apparently, if you lift off the trunk of the car, you don't have any lights here. And people who are going to be behind you and uh, if you're stopped on a highway or something like that, they're not going to be able to see you. So, yep, you have that. And when you close the trunk, voila. Right here we have a rear wiper, which this one is not flimsy. Good job, Audi. Good job for that. The rear bumper is, well, it's very stylish. You have a rear diffuser down here in this grayish color, and I do think that this rear end looks hot. I mean, just look how sleek it is. And even today, in 2024, this looks quite modern. Regarding the boot size, well, this one has 420 liters of cargo space, which is enough room to place a baby stroller or one large suitcase and one small suitcase. But if you need to pack more suitcases, well, things are quite good because you have 1,365 liters when you drop the rear seat. So I do think this is a quite spacious car for its class. All right, jumping in the interior of this car, well, you are greeted with high quality materials. You have sport seats. This car isn't an S line, so, uh, well, it's a surprise that you have sport seats. I like the sound it makes when you close the doors. Uh, honestly, this is a very, very well built car. You have high quality materials, even though you don't have any kind of leather in this one. Still, the quality of the materials is high. Everywhere you press is soft. You don't have any harsh surfaces, except for this area here in the central console. But even this doesn't seem uh, cheap, which it's quite cool because this is not a high-end luxury SUV. Just It's just more like a basic entry level, which isn't bad. The steering wheel looks cool. You have the S-Line steering wheel. Once again, it looks like the S-Line, but it actually isn't because it doesn't have this plaque over here, which is written S-Line, but this is the S-Line steering wheel. I do like it. The seats are very comfortable. These are manually adjustable seats. Unfortunately, they are not heated and uh, well, that's that. But they do offer a good lumbar support and uh, even leg support here because you can pull these out and voila. Everything about this interior is very practical. You can fit five adults here. You have two decent cup holders and, uh, well, that's kind of what you need. You have plenty of storage in the door side. You have plenty of storage here in the glove compartment and uh, you have kind of everything that you actually would need to travel in uh, good, elegant and uh, safety conditions. This car has dual climate controls for both passengers and down here we have the climate controls which they are quite interesting so if you go like this in this pattern you can see that the grades are coming up and like this going down i actually thought these are uh knobs to uh, flip them around but no they just go one time in right one time in left this car doesn't have heated seats which well it is a little bit annoying, but that's pretty much uh, what annoys me about the seats. Here you have the driving selecting modes, the most stupidest button on the planet, this one, and a couple of blank buttons as well. Here is another blank button, and here, well, this is 
a very huge blank space i don't know why it's here but still they're probably on different cars they fit more options than this one really has the whole aspect of the dashboard feels cool goes into the same uh, idea as the other audis you have this continuous line right here on the door side and it goes all over the dashboard giving it a very continuous aspect i do like that everything in this car was actually thought very well you have here some dome lights uh yep and uh sun visors mm, i don't like the fact that the sun visors have, are made of plastic so everything here is made of cloth which is cool but these are made of this horrible ugh, this horrible plastic the air vents look cool they have this aluminium pattern uh, surrounding them and also on the door side and on the dashboard you have this fake plastic but uh, it has this aluminium finish and I think it looks cool. The armrest is adjustable. Inside the armrest, there's nothing, literally nothing, but it's adjustable on height and length, which is cool. Down here, you have two power sockets and uh, as I mentioned, two decent cup holders. Regarding the infotainment screen, this one can be hided by pressing on it like that and voila, it disappears. But if you press like this, it pops open now let's discuss a bit about the infotainment system of this car which well it's not that different from the other audis from this era the only thing that it's shown differently is this over here because you have the audi q3 car but other than that it's fairly similar if you go into this you have these drive modes that every other audi has but let's go a little bit deep into the settings of this car to see if there's something different regarding so if you go into the system you have vehicle settings let's see what is here voice guidance navigation map color day night traffic skip forward well not here back go again these are the buttons for the steering wheel exterior light you have lights when unlocking and uh, lights when leaving car let's go back central locking lock when driving mm not not that much driver assistance let's see speed warning where you can actually choose what speed you are getting warned at parking aid this is the rear parking sensor because only rear parking sensors you have on this car and uh in-car entertainment fader yeah okay let's go a little bit back this is the setting for the air conditioning which this car has and well that's pretty much it if you go into the menu the menu looks exactly like all the other audis from this era what i want to mention is the sound system which is brilliant the navigation is very simple and easy to use you have bluetooth media don't have apple carplay on android auto so that's it from this button over here you can control the infotainment system this is the volume knob which is a little bit counterintuitive because all the time while i was driving this car i thought this was the volume knob and that was quite quite annoying let's talk a bit about the gauge cluster because this one is very simple you have turn signal over there turn signal over here in this little uh, screen or whatever but in the gauge cluster you can see that this one is not a colored screen which uh, is a little bit annoying because uh, well i actually expected that you have a couple of options here you can see the range you can see the miles per gallon blah 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 so the gauge cluster is quite simple quite not entertaining but it looks cool at night time due to the lights that this car has so overall this cabin space here in the front seats it's very decent you have decent amount of headroom legroom and um, the driving position is quite up high i do like that i do like that you have a good visibility um, on the road and uh, the only thing that actually bothers me a bit is that you can feel the fact that this car is narrow um, i don't know why i've driven different cars that were actually smaller than this one but uh, it felt much much bigger this one actually feels more narrower than it actually is and uh, that's puzzling because I truly like this um, this Q3 I, I never thought I'm gonna like an Audi Q3 because I always liked uh, big SUVs and things like that but uh, this one uh, after driving it almost all day uh, started to grow on me and uh, 
I have to tell you that I truly, truly like it, especially with this uh, gangstish, uh, well, uh, style. Yo, what do you think about the rear seats of this car? Well, the rear seats uh, are comfortable, surprisingly enough. What bothers me is that you don't have an armrest over here, which is annoying, very, very annoying, because you don't have an armrest. You do have dual climate vents here, which they are helpful. You have a power socket down there, which again, it's helpful. But other than that, you don't have anything. Right here, you don't have uh, any space to put anything. In the door side, you do have some place to put uh, some bottles and uh, a little bit of stuff, but that's pretty much it. I do think that three people can actually sit here. It's not that bad, but the fact that you don't have any cup holders is a little bit annoying. You do have a good visibility at the dashboard and at the road, which is kind of cool. And the fact that this car has a slopey rear end, actually, I thought that it's gonna be uncomfortable sitting here, but it actually isn't. I got this car from my friends at CarZ. CarZ are a specialized secondhand car dealership located in Ipswich. All the cars come with six months IRC warranty, which is extendable up to three years. If you want to part exchange your car, they can help you with that. If you have a low credit score and you need finance, CarZ are your guys. And if you want your car to be delivered all the way across UK, CarZ will do that for you. Also, they were awarded by Auto Trader for their excellent customer service. So check them out at carz.co.uk. Well, after discussing about everything regarding this car, now it's time to drive it. It's time to put the seatbelt on and um, share the experience, the driving experience with you. Because, well, you are my viewers and I try to be as honest as possible. This car has 83,000 miles and it does behave quite, quite cool. Okay, um, the climate vents are a little bit noisier the engine is smooth i like this two liter diesel engine provides the power that this car needs to get going and it's quite quite cool okay let's get out on the road with this bad boy or bad girl but well yeah uh regarding the comfort i'm on a bumpy road you can see that the car is shaking a bit but it's not harsh um, and I need to mention this because the wheels are perfect on the 17 inch size if you get bigger wheels you're gonna have a lot of discomfort and uh, well if you want to trade your comfort towards the looks of your car well that's fine but if you're aiming for comfort I do think that the 17 inch wheels are enough and um, these ones are quite cute being uh, painted in black, give the car a very sexy uh, look. So, yep, the steering is very light. One thing that I've noticed driving this car is that um, sometimes it has quite a lot of body roll. Because it's up high, it's narrow and it's short, feels a little bit unsafe when you try to take high speed corners I wouldn't recommend that so uh, you better behave yourself but if you get this car with an all-wheel drive because this one that I have today is just front-wheel drive if you get a car like this with an all-wheel drive quattro system then well things are different you can toss that around as much as you want because that one will stay fitted to the ground regarding cabin noise this car is fairly good isolated you don't have that much noise inside of course it's not comparable with the q7 or the uh, q8 it's bigger brothers because well things are different over there but it's not that noisy inside the quality of the materials is good the driving position is fairly good it doesn't feel like in a big SUV don't get me wrong you don't have that feeling but still 
you feel a little bit lifted off the ground which is a good sensation to have if you like to sit up high the seats are very comfortable the climate controls i like one thing that annoys me right now is the air conditioning because i have a headache um, because of the aircon i don't know why uh, probably i'm getting old but well it is what it is so i have to shut it off so yeah overall i do think that this car is quite a practical one especially for a young family because um, you have five seats you have large boot you have a very economical engine you can almost do 70 miles per gallon outside down with this layout this two liter diesel engine with the six speed manual gearbox which I, i'm not lying to you these are good numbers the low tax and the insurance is not gonna be high so uh, yeah i think it makes sense for a young family uh, if you uh, want to buy a small sport crossover i think this is one to get because it has premium materials it's a premium car and uh, well it goes against the competition quite well because this car uh, battles with uh, the Mercedes GLA uh, with the BMW 1 series and 2 series from BMW and uh, with Ford uh, Explorer and uh, Range Rover Evoque now I do think that the Evoque is a little bit sexier it has much more sex appeal than this one but that has some uh, drawbacks regarding suspension and uh, well even space this one has much more room than the than the evoke so this choice actually belongs to you if you want to have a more sexier car then you will go for the evoke but for a young family i do recommend this one is very uh, economical is well the maintenance is not gonna kill you you're not gonna give away a kidney uh, and probably a half of your lung and uh, it's gonna be very very practical so yeah this is what it is that was it for today guys hope you enjoyed it press a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this already and in the meantime I'm still gonna drive this bad boy today for a while because uh, I kind of like it in this blacked out finish people are looking at it and uh, yeah that's interesting so yes farewell to all and I'll see you in the next episode.